Alright, so today's video is going to be a shorter one, but this idea just popped into my head because of a comment that I read on my last video, and I wanted to talk about it, or I should say my last Modern Warfare video. And this is actually a really interesting topic to me because I'm kind of stuck with my opinion, it's one of those, so I want to hear your guys' down below. I know that might seem lazy, but... I'm not going to pretend I know, but I'm not going to pretend I'm not interested. If you're looking for a definitive place to grab opinions from, this is not the channel for that. So, let's talk about this for a second. What does customization matter when the time to kill is incredibly fast? From what we can see in Modern Warfare, the time to kill seems like about on par with classic Call of Duty. In my opinion, at least, it looks like you're going to be getting three to four shot kills, maybe five shots at a distance or with suppressors on. But this is something that has probably been talked about since the beginning of COD. I've definitely had the thought before, but with Modern Warfare, I'm really thinking about it. What does customization matter? Like, what's the difference between having, you know, one of three types of barrels, one of three types of stocks, like they showed off in the, uh, uh, in the gunsmith, gun bench, uh, video they showed. Uh, what What is the point of that customization when everything's probably going to melt? I mean, it's kind of why people think that Modern Warfare 2 is really balanced, is because everything just killed really fast. Obviously, hierarchies form naturally, and there are going to be weapons that are above others, you know. They all kill around the same speed, but one gun has a little bit more accuracy or a faster reload or, you know, cleaner iron sights even. You know, hierarchies form naturally, you can't avoid them. It's up to the developers to keep those hierarchies in check so we don't have the, the BAL-27, you know, fiasco we had with Advanced Warfare. You know, that was a nightmare in my opinion. I still think it's one of the worst balancing choices, decisions, uh, one of the worst balanced Call of Duty weapons in the history of Call of Duty weapons. I think it shits all over the UMP-45 for Modern Warfare 2. Uh, I think it shits all over the MP-40. The Battle 27 was like too good in too many ways and it just had endless benefits. But Call of Duty's always had kind of easy gunplay. That's what kind of, you know, has defined the series and I'm okay with that. You know, I'm not one to say that that's bad because if it's easy for someone to kill, then it's easy for you to die and that's where the skill comes in because surviving in a game where you can get deleted faster than you can blink is satisfying. Some people don't find it satisfying, some people just feel like all their kills blend together, it's all just one big amalgamation of hit markers and pointless numbers, and that might mean you're burnt out on Call of Duty or you're in the mood for something else, so I'll go do that instead. But when it comes to us Call of Duty fans, we have to ask ourselves, when does customization become kind of meaningless? Because I remember in Call of Duty Ghosts, like, you didn't need a foregrip and an ACOG scope and muzzle brake to get long-range kills. That's not how you have to spec weapons in Call of Duty. It just really never has been. If you want to run an iron-sighted gun that just has decent recoil control and a decent time to kill, that's all you really need. People weren't landing long-range ACR kills in Modern Warfare 3 because they put on the range proficiency in an ACOG scope. The gun just melted and was easy to control when it came to recoil. So slap on the focus proficiency and a suppressor or extended mags and you're good to go, the iron sights were fine. So really, when Call of Duty starts boasting about its customization, yes, that customization is fun. And I like the aesthetic things a lot. I like having different sights to play around with, and my gun will look different now, and okay, well now I have more movement speed, or now I can, you know, adapt my play style. But when it comes down to it, it's kind of surface level, because you're going to be killing people incredibly fast, and with a lot of ease anyway, all you can do is optimize it for how you play. Well, you're thinking, well, boom, you just answered your question. You optimize it for how you play. I can't say anything because I haven't played this game, but I doubt that ACOG sights are going to be required for long-range combat. I doubt that suppressors are going to make long-range long combat, you know, undoable, because that would be a drastic departure from Call of Duty. And no matter, we've, we've seen this before, no matter how much a development team that's working on COD wants to make something that isn't COD, they know deep down if it's not COD, people won't play it. The further you get from the Call of Duty formula, the more people start to resent your product. We'll have to see around August 1st, and we'll have to see when we get our hands on the game, so I don't want to speculate too much about how guns are going to behave. But matching a gun to your playstyle is kind of as simple as, well... I guess I'm going to do long range stuff, so maybe throw in an optic that makes my sight a little clearer, you know, foregrip and extended mags, because, you know, at range combat you might use a couple more bullets, you're going to want that extended mag, and, you know, in close range combat you're going to be aggressive, well, then you're going to want whatever is equivalent to quick draw laser sight stock, you know, so better hip fire, better movement speed while aiming down sight and faster aim down sight. 
you know, maybe fast mag. So basically, like, if you're gonna play conservative, you maybe don't need quick draw, you know, stock, fast mag, you know, stuff like that. But when you are playing in close quarters, you will, and you're being aggressive. And then other than that, you're just kind of goofing around with your gun, you know. Oh, I have quick draw, but I also have an ACOG scope. So I guess I can aim down sight quickly when I won't need to because ACOGs are going to make me worse up close and quick draw really only affects those really millisecond engagements, but maybe it'll be good, but I don't have a foregrip, so the recoil and the visual recoil paired with the ACOG scope, you, you get what I mean, hopefully. I, I hope I don't need to get too in-depth with this because you guys have played COD before. But I feel like no matter how much customization is in this game, people are just going to gravitate to whatever's faster if they're aggressive and whatever gives them a little bit more range and, you know, survivability if they're playing more conservatively, and that's just how it's going to be, and customization is going to be a little bit shallow. Where customization could really come in is a perk system that actually isn't shit. Call of Duty Ghost perk system, I think, is the best example of the perk system. Um, not because Call of Duty Ghost had perfectly balanced perks. <laughs> it didn't. It had a ton of crutches that I think need to be removed from any Call of Duty game. Um, but Ghosts had a smart idea where perks had a different number value associated with them. Perks that keep you off the minimap or allow you to move around faster while aiming down sight, those cost three points. Something as simple as take no fall damage is a one point because it's a little bit more circumstantial. It's not going to win you a million gunfights like Stalker or setting off the UAV will. And that's where I think customization can become interesting as long as they don't fill it up with crutch perks because certain perks are just crutches and there's no argument about that. Focus and Ready Up are the biggest problems in Call of Duty Ghosts because they always took up three points on your class. Crutches are kind of bad for customization because you're guaranteed to have to have them for pretty much every single loadout unless you're goofing around or just don't want to be competitive in a gunfight. Flinch reduction and sprint out time should be the same for every player across the board in my opinion and should not be affected by a perk because you're just going to need to use it if you're going to play Call of Duty like it's Call of Duty. I think that goes without saying if you've played COD for any you know extended period of time. So that's kind of the end of this video. Hopefully you guys understand where I'm coming from. I'm not saying that customization is pointless. Obviously you can tailor weapons more towards your playstyle, but if the time to kill is incredibly fast and very easy to do, then the customization is surface level. You know, when you have to worry more about each individual gunfight because it could go on longer than a millisecond, then how you spec your class will actually be able to be utilized instead of just these split second reactionary gunfights that happen often in Call of Duty. Hopefully you guys get where I'm coming from, and I thank you for watching. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye.